Welcome to a very, very special edition of Ask a 4 or 5 Anything. Actually, this is part 11. The reason why this is so special is because I'm recording, editing, and publishing this on my 31st birthday. My 30th birthday, unfortunately, was kind of robbed for me because it was at the height of the lockdown due to the global situation. So I'm kind of going big now, and I'm inviting about 75 of my friends, and I'm paying for their tab at a local bar that my friend owns. So as soon as I publish this video on YouTube, I'm headed to the bar to have a good time. But in the meanwhile, let's get started. Brown Rice is asking, what does your boss think about your YouTube channel? My boss knows that not only do I have a YouTube channel that has a growing following, so thank you guys very much for this, but also that I will be quitting my desk job as a software engineer to do YouTube full time. I'm pretty open about that. And luckily for me, John is a good friend of mine. John is uh, my boss, in case he didn't pick up on that context. So I'm pretty open about the transition of going from full-time to quitting or maybe full-time to part-time. And I do that out of the respect that not only is he my friend, but he's also been an amazing colleague and boss. Uh, he actually is a year younger than me, but I look up to him in so many ways. So. They think positively of it. The colleagues that also do follow me say that I have a pretty decent talent, I guess, for YouTube. And they like my following as well, even though they're not tennis players. So it's been an amazing journey so far. And again, I wanted to thank you guys so very much for following me on this crazy journey of the YouTube life. Also, Speaking of YouTube life, I did make a Twitter. So if you guys want to send me a little bit of a birthday gift, follow me on Twitter and I will leave a link to that Twitter down in the description below. Just a forewarning, my Twitter account is very, very offensive, very rude, and about 95% of the content I will be posting on my Twitter is absolutely not safe for work. So I believe the Twitter handle is called Rude Tennis Memes. So if you guys want rude, crude, and borderline offensive tennis memes on the Twitter platform, please follow my link down to the Twitter in the description below, and we could have some fun on that. Thanks. Stone is asking, Mark, how do you gauge your ability to fight off two of the tennis spin dudes? And I believe the tennis spin dudes will put their spin on my tennis. <laughs> uh, realistically, I actually haven't seen the tennis spin um, guys hit. It's mainly been, um, I, I believe his name is Harry, uh, the person that actually owns the tennis shop and is the main face of tennis spin. You know, he has some really, really good content. I've been watching mostly those type of videos. I haven't seen them hit, unfortunately, but if this is a call out for me to play any of the tennis spin guys, I believe they're located somewhere in California. Once this pandemic is a little bit more under control, I'd be more than happy to play YouTubers such as uh, the Tennis Spin guys and um, Dill plays acing tennis and maybe even Seria tennis again as soon as uh, everything's a little bit more under control. So hopefully we'll make that happen in the near future. Thanks, Dill. Muscle Man is asking, how worn do shoes have to be for the six month durability thing, the durability guarantee? So. In my opinion, my rule of thumb for these six month durability guarantees is if you can see the next layer under the sole, which is typically a different color, it's a pretty good sign that you can send it in with whatever process that Nike, Asics, I don't think even Adidas has it anymore because they got rid of the barricades. So as soon as you see like a different color, which is a different layer underneath the actual shoe, you're pretty much good to go. Hopefully you get some of your uh, new shoes from this uh, outsole warranty muscle man sooner rather than later. Happy hitting. New players asking, my muscles are becoming way too big like Nadal's since I play a lot of tennis. How do you keep them in check, man? Um, oh, okay, I guess this is a good problem to have. So if your muscles are getting too big, I suggest going and looking at the subreddit called R Tennis. Just looking at those posts or even the Talk Tennis Warehouse forums, you're gonna lose a lot of muscle mass just because of the topics that they talk about on those respective platforms. New player, hopefully that helps you lose a little bit of muscle mass with that one easy step. Thanks. 
Fabi Santoro is asking, hey man, can you make a video like this? Kind of curious to see what 4-5 tennis looks like from this point of view. Kudos to Karu. And he's referring to Karu doing the point of view using some sort of mouth modification on a GoPro. Actually, hold on. Let me take a look at this. So I recently bought a GoPro head slash visor mount because this was in high demand from my actually live stream yesterday. By the way, I do live stream on YouTube while streaming tennis rackets and answering questions. I do that on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central Time and every now and then on Sunday nights as kind of a variety show. So if you guys want to hang out with me or ask me any questions or just Listen to lo-fi music while I'm streaming tennis rackets. Come hang out with me. It's a pretty good time. But I have a GoPro head mount now. So be on the lookout for that. For Brie Santoro and from the people on my Discord, thank you for that suggestion because this is going to be a pretty damn interesting video. And whether or not you guys want me to do um, some sort of match play or just drill session, leave a comment down in the section below and let me know what type of video you want me to do with this Amazon Basics GoPro head mount. That is a point of view similar to what Karu did at my tennis HQ. Thanks guys. Muscle Man with all the questions is asking, how do you get speed on a kick serve? You could get height and kick, but I struggle with the pace. You have to understand that a kick serve's priority is not actually pace, it's not miles per hour. So either you need to put a little bit more oomph behind your shot because if you want to have more speed, on your serve, you're gonna sacrifice either accuracy and maybe even a little bit of that spin, whether it's top spin, side spin, or the good old American twist type of spin. So you just need to put more energy behind the ball because the energy you put on a ball on a serve has to come from somewhere. So maybe gain a little bit more muscle mass and um, or maybe even put more weight on your racket. That might be a good option too. So it is a very tricky, very tricky question, but you know, it's gonna take a lot of work and maybe even, you know, start lifting more, maybe some back squats. So muscle man, hopefully that helps my, my dude. Corey Muncher is asking, can you give me tips on starting a YouTube channel for tennis? Um, so the thing of being discovered on YouTube, which is the greatest or second greatest search engine in the world, by the way, depending on how you look at it. You have to be very, very specific. So I got pretty lucky because I did tennis string reviews to start. Those were like my first like five or six uh, YouTube videos. And eventually it started to gain subscriber counts and traction and views and you know hours watched on the public domain. And then eventually I did expand to uh, tennis match play and tennis match play analysis and eventually stuff like this weekly Q&A. So my advice to anybody here, such as you, Curry Muncher, is if you're starting a YouTube channel, your content should be very, very, very specific. And then once you start getting a following, you could expand to something a little bit more general. And hopefully, you know, that does start you on your YouTube journey. And don't get me wrong, I got pretty lucky with um, Essential Tennis, my friend Ian, getting some exposure from him and being able to collaborate with him and get some exposure from his almost quarter million um, YouTube subscribers. So every day I'm very thankful for people like you and people like him um, getting me to where I am today. Kayla is asking, am I doing an unboxing of your birthday present? Um, I did do an unboxing, it's on my Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, um, there's a link down in the description below for that. I did do an unboxing of uh, Kayla's birthday gift for me. So Kayla, thank you very much for uh, the Slytherin mug because Slytherin forever, down with Gryffindor. I guess Ravenclaw is okay and Hufflepuff just does whatever. Um, but it, realistically for more of my tennis equipment reviews, I gotta start doing unboxings because that's kind of a popular thing and uh, it kind of builds the excitement. So hopefully um, the unboxing will lead into the tennis string reviews as well. Thanks, Kayla. The Woodlands is asking, how much percentage of the game is mental and physical? Um, in all honesty, men the mentality part of tennis after let's say the 4-0 or maybe even 4-5 level in singles, the, the mentality is 
going to be the dominant factor, uh, the mentality of controlling your emotions, the mentality of you know, how you're going to practice before a big match. Don't get me wrong, the physicality of being in shape and being able to chase down one ball after another is important, but I believe the mentality is uh, significantly more important than the physicality after a certain level, even in the amateur, uh, the amateur stages of competitive tennis. So if I were to put a number on it, um, I would say the mentality part is, let's say 69% of a tennis match. Nice. So that's it for me, guys. I'm gonna edit this and publish this and get on to um, hang out with about 50 of my friends I haven't seen in quite a bit. So things are gonna get crazy tonight. So uh, when you guys watch this on a Friday night, I'll probably be out of commission for the next 24 hours. So as always, guys, happy hitting.